All right. Welcome, everybody. I know we're still going to have folks coming in, but we're going to go ahead and get started. We appreciate you joining us live today. We've got a great webinar ahead brought to you by GEM and Talent Board uh, on diversity sourcing, how to search and find underrepresented talent. I'm very excited that you're joining us today. We've got a great speaker ahead. But before we get started, I want to just bring up some housekeeping items first. And the fact is we are recording this webinar, although again, we're glad that you have joined us live today. And um, we'll make that recording available tomorrow. And you make sure to ask questions throughout too. We'll take those at the end of the webinar. It's pretty standard format for, for webinars. And please do use the Q&A portion of the Zoom dashboard. You can, you can do little comments to us in the chat, that's fine. But ask your questions in the Q&A part of the Zoom. We really appreciate that. And, um, and again, we want to hear from you too. So if you've got comments throughout, you know, you can feel free to post those as well. But we've got a great presentation ahead. And that's what we're going to do today. And um, my name is Kevin Grossman, President of Talent Board. And I'm going to go away in a minute. I'm going to turn it over to our speaker and then come back at the end when we take questions um, with my team member, Ron Mockamer, as well. So let's go ahead and introduce our main presenter, Georgina Frazier, who is the Recruiting Program Manager at JAM. Welcome, Georgina. Thanks, excited to be here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go into the, into the, the background now, go away. <laughs> and this is all, it's all you now, all right? Welcome. Perfect. Um, so my pronouns are she and they. Um, I've been working with Jem for actually almost two years now, um, and I couldn't be more impressed with the strategies my team has um, created to source diverse talent um, and super excited to share them with you all today. Um, so during today's webinar, I'm going to be sharing sourcing strategies um, for finding unrepresented or URG talent. Um, and I'll be referring to those prospects as URGs, unrepresented groups, um, for the rest of this webinar. Um, diversity is a value that's always been a part of GEM's DNA, um, you know, from the very beginning. So, you know, it has to be a big part of our recruiting programs, um, from sourcing to nurturing to conversations around inclusion, equity um, for URG talent is um, a very important part of my job here at GEM. Um, and I feel super lucky that um, is also one of like my personal core values. Um, and I like to be the plug for my community. And so anything that I can do to help them advance their advance in their career, I am here for it. Um, so after I share my sourcing strategies, um, Katarina from the, from the GEM product team will be joining us to give a demo of the GEM platform um, and diversity analytics, which supports efforts to build diverse teams. And lastly, I am by no means an expert. Um, I've just had some success finding diverse candidates in pretty interesting ways. Um, so please share your questions and sourcing tips in that Q&A section as well. Um, and if we don't get to all of your questions in the webinar, um, please follow up with me offline. All right, so um, before we jump into sourcing strategies, I wanna explore the current state of diversity, equity, and inclusion. All right, so to understand, um, we are all, to understand where we are all at in terms of sourcing URGs, um, let's run a quick poll. Um, you should see the poll question in the webinar portal. Um, there it is. And uh, the question is, do you currently have initiatives in place to source URGs, folks from unrepresented groups? All right, and the options are yes, no, no, but we plan to in the future. All right, and so once again, you can find the poll question um, in the webinar portal. All right, I see some of these results coming in. Keep them coming in. All right, and Kevin, can you share the results with us? All right, so 52% of you said yes, 17% of you said no, and 31% said we plan to in the future. All right, I hope this webinar helps with, um, with all of those. All right, so, um, you know, why is sourcing so, in, why is sourcing URG so important? Um, first off, I want to talk about like, um, you know, the various recruiting channels to attract talent um, and like why 
sourcing is so important for this. Um, so sourcing is critical to diversity recruiting because most channels like referrals and inbound are inherently less diverse, right? So if you're not actively sourcing and nurturing a diverse talent pool, you won't see a diverse pipeline, right? Or a diverse set of interviews or a diverse team. So here at GEM, each time we open a new rec, we actually focus solely on sourcing URGs. Um, and we, in conjunction, like don't post the job on the career site um, until other levels need to, need to be pulled, right? So that's when we feel as though we've exhausted that pipeline or the business need is too strong. Um, and, you know, nurturing long before we even open a role and sourcing your AGs at the very beginning of the role. Um, opening allows us to control the pipeline by making sure URG talent is at the top of the funnel, um, therefore inside your talent pool. All right, so just to, to, set, to set the stage, I'd like to share some numbers on the current state of diversity in the workforce. So 60% of um, job seekers claim a diverse workforce is an important consideration when evaluating a company or a job offer. Um, and according to a survey Jim conducted this year, 50% of talent leaders say diversity is the most important trend shaping the recruiting industry in 2020. Um, this percentage is from a survey Jim ran in April. Um, but we would anticipate the percentage of talent leaders focused on diversity hiring has gone up, especially over the past um, couple of months, and then we'll continue to do so. So yet, yeah, even though the majority of uh, job seekers and talent leaders prioritize diversity, companies are still struggling with DNI, DE and I, I'm sorry. And the struggle is very real. 49% uh, of talent professionals cited finding diverse candidates to interview as the biggest barrier to improving diversity. So if that's a challenge you're facing, hopefully these tips I'm going to go over today will help you address that. Um, but it's also not just about filling quotas by hiring people from URG groups, right? It's also about equity and inclusion and giving people from those groups into leadership roles. Um, and you know, we still don't see a proportional represent, representation of URGs in leading roles. Currently, the Fortune 500 list has three companies led by Black CEOs um, and 37 companies led by female CEOs. So while the percentage um, of female CEOs is at an all-time high, yay, uh, female-led companies still represent only 7% of that list. So there's a lot of work to do <laughs> across the board. Um, and I think sourcing, um, I'm sorry, sourcers and recruiters have an important role in all of this, um, which is why I'm excited to show you how I find um, URG talent today. All right. So let's talk about how to find folks from unrepresented groups. All right, so, um, so before you begin sourcing URGs, I wanna talk about um, a couple of crucial paradigm shifts you might need to make. Um, so sourcing for URGs may require you to shift some fundamental ideas you have, right? Including what a quote unquote good candidate looks like. Um, so what we've, what we've accomplished, um, what their journey to get there looks like. In other words, you want to become extremely aware of your unconscious bias and how they play out in your sourcing. So um, if you haven't already, we recommend um, committing to putting yourself through an unconscious bias training, um, whether that's with Ulysses Smith from Blend, um, Facebook Catalyst or elsewhere. Um, most of these you can do in an afternoon. Um, and while they won't eliminate your biases, they'll surface them to your, um, your subconscious so you can be aware of them as you move through LinkedIn and respond accordingly. Um, so uh, the second mental paradigm shift would be um, adjusting your concerns that the message Con adjusting concerns and metrics you've come to use as indicators of success, right? So like the traditional boxes you've learned to check elite schools, years of management experience um, will alienate women, Black and Latinx talent who statistically see fewer promotions than their white male counterparts. Um, so skipping over um, a prospect because the work history on LinkedIn um, shows a lapse in employment means alienating parents, right? Typically mothers, caretakers, again, often women, um, you know, trans folks who've had to take time off for anything or veterans who serve time in the military or other URG groups. So ultimately, you know, the more you open your mind in this process, the better. Um, URGs are developing skills in um, alt alternative learning environments and non-traditional means. Um, so this may mean sourcing for candidates and in industries you don't typically recruit from. 
All right. So tip one, um, diversifying the keywords you source on LinkedIn is going to be a really important part of your sourcing strategy. Um, so my first sourcing tip is to search for prospects who attended schools that predominantly serve URG populations. Um, we know how easy it is to keep returning to the same schools you've recruited candidates from in the past. Um, after all, they've proven their ROI. Um, but when you source from schools that predominantly serve URG students and diverse populations, you're statistically more likely to come across that URG talent, right? Um, so these could include uh, historically Black colleges and universities, HBCUs, Latinx serving institutions, um, tribal colleges, women's colleges, um, historically Black sororities and fraternities, churches, LGBT sororities and fraternities. Um, and you can also seek out schools with um, high diversity indexes. All right, let's move on to tip two. All right, so the next step is thinking beyond traditional degrees. Um, sorry, the next tip is thinking beyond traditional degrees, things like coding boot camps, nano degree programs, community colleges, and vocational training programs. Um, these are all technical training programs that offer the same skills um, a university does, but because they don't have the systemic barriers that often exist in collegiate programs, they attract more students from non-traditional backgrounds. Um, they also attract students from diverse socioeconomic backgrounds um, and talent like mothers and caretakers who may not um, have the privilege of attending college classes during the day. Um, and this is a great way to search for URGs on LinkedIn. Um, you can also search specific programs that explicitly serve URGs. Um, and one example of this, of this is the Grace Hopper program. Um, and this is a coding bootcamp for women. For women. Um, there's also Floodgate Academy, which I attended, um, and Black Girls Code, Hack the Hood, and a number of other um, comp sci programs that explicitly serve um, URGs. All right, another search you can do is for professional organizations that serve URGs. Um, the organizations you see on the slide are just a snapshot of some um, of the orgs that exist. So there's organizations for black engineers, females um, in tech, vets who code, trans in tech, black product managers. Um, I just found uh, sisters in sales um, and many more listed in GEMS um, diversity sourcing at the top of the funnel ebook plug, um, which is linked in the attachment section as well. So in order to use these organizations to search for talent, I would start with one on, on this list that interests you based on the roles um, you're trying to fill and then get created, and then get creative, right? Use Google or LinkedIn to expand on your list, making sure those keywords are a combination of role or skill set specific and URG specific. Um, and then ask your female or other URG employees if they know or belong to any um, orgs that they'd recommend. All right. Another thing I often do when sourcing URGs is search pronouns and common URG names. Um, remembering that female pronouns, right, she and her, will return predominantly female results on LinkedIn. Um, non-binary program, non-binary pronouns um, such as they, them, z, zim, etc., will return the profiles of um, gender non-conforming talent. Um, and so, pair those pronouns with the skills or the role you're looking for. Um, and then for female talent, consider Boolean strings of the most popular first names. Um, though note, this will um, serve you predominantly white female talent. Um, and then for other diverse groups, try surnames, right? So you can use the US Census Bureau to identify the most common surnames for people who identify as Black, Latinx, Asian Pacific Island, et cetera. Awesome. So if you're open to relocating employees, um, you can search for talent in locations that have high URG populations. Um, some examples include Arizona, New York, Texas, Georgia, California. Um, and you may also search specific cities such as Chicago, Atlanta, Miami, and LA. 
So searching for extracurriculars. Um, so these extracurriculars that prospects list on their profiles might um, represent their identity or allyship of URG groups, right? So things like employee resource groups, um, ERGs, volunteer experience, um, church leadership roles, and a lot of um, professionals involved in these groups will list it on their LinkedIn profiles. Um, I think it's a great indicator, not only of their ethnic background, right, but their involvement and commitment to wake to making the workplace um, more diverse and inclusive. Um, and I can also see DNI licenses and um, certifications being more prevalent in a few years um, and offer another great way to find URGs. All right, so the last tip I have around keyword sources um, is the use of hashtags. Um, and so hashtag hire black initiative um, has gotten over 1200 LinkedIn followers in like just the first month of um, creating the hashtag. Um, and so think about where they'll be like a year from now or five years from now. Um, the lesbians, the hashtag lesbians who tech is always a good one. Um, and then even attending a lesbians who tech annual conference each year has had a pretty good ROI for us. Um, and this year I went to one um, and I'm now a part of a queers and tech Slack group, which is pretty fun. Um, Angela Ross has a nonprofit and the name is uh, Trans Tech Social Enterprises. Um, and this is a nonprofit that aims to empower and educate and employ LGBTQ plus people through the use of technology. Um, and lastly, Sister Circle, Black Women in Tech. Um, it's a LinkedIn group, it's a Facebook group. I think they're working on an app now. Um, they are fantastic. I actually found someone from my team from that group. Um, and all of these are just a few that I'm aware of. So please let me know what you all are finding. All right, so now that you've done all this research, you've got an impressive list of organizations, um, your target talent is affiliated with, you've used these names to search for people on LinkedIn, but why not follow the organizations themselves? Right, so pay attention to the comments made on posts to those um, organizations pages, right? Who is engaging thoughtfully and intelligently? Um, they might be your next passive talent. Uh, LinkedIn also has um, LinkedIn groups, which are online hubs for professionals with similar professions or, or interests to come together and share content, ask questions, um, and make business contacts. These are over 2 million groups on LinkedIn, so you should be able to do a search and find a number of groups that fit the talent, um, that fit the type of talent that you're looking for. <clears throat> um, but I would also recommend joining these groups. Um, I would also recommend not joining these groups and just calling it a day, right? So once your request to join a group has been accepted, um, be an active community member, right? Like introduce yourself, engage, um, engage with the members, ask questions, share information, and then listen more than talking, right? Um, the more valuable you are as a group member, the more value people will expect you to bring to their careers um, when it is time to mention those open roles for your org. Awesome. Um, so another awesome feature on LinkedIn that's been pretty helpful for finding URGs is the people also viewed feature um, to show similar profiles. So when you find a terrific prospect, right, click into people also viewed or similar, prof um, similar profiles. Um, and then using matching algorithms, LinkedIn will serve up 100 more profiles of qualified talent like the one you've discovered. Um, this feature essentially allows you to reverse engineer a search, right? So think of the most talented, highest performing employees in your org um, or your dream hires or talent you didn't accept your offer um, or stellar talent you had to pass on um, in the last round of hiring, right? Look them up and then dive into similar profiles. All right, so similarly, you can find a lot of URGs um, just from looking at someone just by looking at um, who someone is engaging with, right? Um, whose posts they're liking, um, whose posts they're commenting on, um, whose posts they're resharing, right? Um, and so at GEM, for example, diversity has been a core value of the company since the very beginning. Um, and I have a lot of colleagues who post um, and like posts related to that value. Um, I often look at who is reacting to those posts or um, whose posts they are, um, they are reacting to or are commenting on their post um, to discover talent whom that value also resonates with, right? And who might um, fit into the URG groups I'm sourcing for. 
Um, another thing I often do is add people who might not be the best fit now, um, maybe because they're overqualified or underqualified, um, but then fit some type of criteria I'm looking for, right? Like, because their networks may come in handy in the future. Um, I might add these people to my network um, or even add them to GEM. And so I can include them in an email sequence when I'm ready to source for um, a particular role. Um, maybe they aren't necessarily suited for the role, but they might be able to connect me with someone who is, right? Maybe directly or through their LinkedIn network. All right, so LinkedIn's career pages will let you share your company story and showcase your culture, right? So. Uh, from the perspective of your diversity initiatives, this will mean telling your company's diversity story, right? Sharing your DNI goals, um, highlighting the honors you've been awarded in the DNI space. Um, and what's so great about LinkedIn's career pages is that um, they're tailored to the user, right? So visitors will see the content that's most likely relevant relevant to them based on your target audience. Um, and so an awesome branded page that highlights diversity in your organization is collateral. Um, you'll want to point to in your outreach TRGs. Um, and I, I encourage you to, um, I encourage the sharing of roles you're, sur you're sourcing for, right? Most URG groups get roles um, because of word of mouth, Facebook, IG, Twitter, Clubhouse is a thing now, right? So um, when reaching out, send a JD link and ask them to share in the nicest way possible, of course. All right, so there are a number um, of offline strategies as well that you can use for sourcing URGs. Um, we know traditional offline strategies will include um, will it will be online <laughs> because of COVID, um, but because these activities can still be really valuable for sourcing URGs, um, at GEM we usually host uh, recruiting events at our office. Remember happy hours, y'all. <laughs> uh, we won't be doing any of those <laughs> anytime soon, um, but we've started hosting some career development webinars for college students or entry level folks to help build pipeline and nurture entry level talent. Um, you might choose to do something similar for URGs, right? Um, and then involving everyone at your company is really important for sourcing URGs. You know, we think every employee should be consistently recruiting for your organization. Um, you know, talent acquisition doesn't have a monopoly on uh, networking, right? So employees across teams and at every level of the organization have, have and should be building relationships with talent everywhere. Um, and encourage everyone in the company to make networking a priority whenever possible. Um, this may mean explaining to managers the importance of allotting time for team, mem for team members to participate in groups and attend events. Um, and building those considerations into your company's DNA will eventually ensure that um, bringing diverse talent into your pipeline is a collection of organic day-to-day -day processes that becomes like second nature to everyone in your organizations. Um, I really love meetups. They're online now. They're not as awkward as they sound. Um, and I think meetups are a really great way. Um, you know, they're already ready-made social hubs where URGs will share interest um, and are already spending time in, right? So meetup.com is a great platform to search for a community um, and professional events happening near you that will um, likely attract talent, um, likely attract your, your target prospects. And then host your own networking events, right? Over time, you may start hosting your own offline events for your G's in the community. Um, these events will give attendees a chance to see what's behind the scenes of your company, right? Assuming you host them over video. <laughs> um, and they'll also make it easier for um, employees to attend, right? So this means prospective talent can get a firsthand experience of what the interpersonal dynamics and your culture as a whole feels like, right? So make sure your event title addresses the interests um, and the speakers represent the communities you hope to engage. All right, so even if you don't um, advertise your tech talk as a event for women who code or queers who code, um, if two out of the four people are your, of your, on your panel are put together are women um, and one is openly queer, um, you'll probably end up with an audience that's skewed in your favor. Um, partner with organizations, right? Partner with organizations that represent the communities you want to reach. Um, partnerships can take many forms um, and 
you know, you're only limited by your creativity here. So think about how you can um, strategically partner with organizations you feel most aligned with um, to build your employer brand. Um, and maybe it means setting up a table at their events. Um, maybe it means sending an ambassador from your org to speak on their panels, an excellent opportunity to share the relevant work your company is doing, gain visibility, credibility, and network with um, prospective candidates. Maybe it means sponsorship, right? Either um, of uh, particular events or an organization as a whole. Um, maybe it means just connecting some of your promising students at a given boot camp um, with mentors at your company. Um, SV Academy is one organization that Jen partners with and who we've hired a number of employees from. Um, SV Academy is an educational program on a mission to um, democratize the tech industry through a business development fellowship. Um, and this is just one example of the types of orgs your company can partner with um, to find talent from non-traditional backgrounds or um, non-traditional degrees. Um, and then also collaborate, collaborate with colleges and universities. All right, so that concludes my portion of the presentation today. I hope these tips help everyone source for URGs. Um, and if you have any questions for me, please submit them using the questions feature um, and we'll get to them in a few minutes. And so with that, I'm going to hand it over to Katarina from GEMS product team for a live GEM demo. Thanks, Georgina. Hi, everyone, and thank you uh, for giving us your time and attention today. As Georgina mentioned, sourcing is an integral part of any recruiting strategy focused on increasing underrepresented representation. So I'm excited to talk about how talent acquisition teams are using GEM to streamline their sourcing efforts and give a quick demo of the platform, including our diversity analytics feature. GEM is an all-in-one recruiting platform that integrates with LinkedIn, email, uh, other platforms, and your app applicant tracking system, and eliminates much of a, a much of a manual and tedious work that uh, sourcers and recruiters do in reaching out to prospective candidates. GEM enables data-driven, world-class recruiting teams to find, engage, and nurture top talent. With GEM, you can find, engage, and nurture top talent, get full funnel pipeline analytics from Outreach to Offer, and gain unparalleled visibility into diversity of your hiring funnel. With GEM, customers source five times faster, double their response rates, and double their conversions to initial phone screen. We're proud at GEM to partner with over 500 top recruiting teams. So what I'd love to do now is show you a demo of a feature that can help your team assess how you're doing with your diversity initiatives. Though diversity has been top of mind for recruiters for a long time now, it's been especially difficult and even impossible to track diversity across the entire pipeline, especially at the top of the funnel. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share my screen so you can see a little bit of how GEM can provide these kinds of insights. What I'm going to be doing is a live demo of two parts of this product. Um, one is called Outreach Stats and one is called Pipeline Analytics. And I'll talk a little bit about how these can help. So Outreach Stats is, is you can think of a way for you to see the results, the responses, uh, the response stats to all of your outreach activities. So as I mentioned, if you're reaching out to maybe a diverse slate of candidates, but um, for some reason, your message might be alienating some of them. Maybe it, they don't feel um, that they might belong at your organization. Maybe some of them are dropping out of the funnel even before they can even get a, get a response to you. Um, so outreach stats is a great way to diagnose whether or not that might be happening. So let me just show you here. Um, we've got April, March, February, January. And what I can do here is I can break down by gender and see whether or not there's a difference in response rates between men and women. And I can also do the same thing for race and uh, race and ethnicity, race or ethnicity. Um, so, you know, if I'm looking at my pipeline here, do I feel like uh, I need to increase the representation of a certain group? Um, do I feel like the response rates are um, looking uh, maybe poor for a certain group? You can also group these uh, by team members. So you can see how specific team members uh, messaging might be uh, affecting uh, your pipeline. You can also group by sequence to see whether or not specific sequences perform better with these groups um, and then group along uh, some other groupings as well. 
The second part of this demo that I wanted to show you was in pipeline analytics. Uh, so pipeline analytics is a way to see your outreach across the entire funnel. So we've talked about this a couple times. Um, but here, for example, uh, you could break down your pipeline. Actually, let's say let's let's say we're interested in uh, breaking down by department. Um, so in that case, what we're going to do is group by department, and then let's break down by gender. So now I can see. Uh, let's say we're hiring for some engineering talent. Um, how pass through rates are looking across men and women. Um, and, and there's a really cool um, feature here as well, uh, a forecasting calculator. Let's say that we are uh, wanting to hire um, three engineering roles in the next year. And we're curious to know if we did wanna make sure that women had a chance in this pool, how many uh, candidates we'd want to reach out to. And it looks like given our historical pass-through rates, that would be 91 candidates to expect three hires. Let's say, um, oops. <laughs> let's say uh, this is a 100% uh, uh, rate between onsite and offer. Uh, then we can see maybe how that changes these numbers. So pipeline analytics is super powerful. Again, you can group by a lot of things if you're maybe homing in on a specific job or a specific recruiter. Uh, if you want to look at rejection reasons even um, uh, between uh, different genders or different races or ethnicities, you can do all of that in pipeline analytics. So that was a very brief um, demo of GEM's analytics platform. GEM is a lot more than that. It also automates the sourcing part of it as well. But before we um, get into Q&A, um, and thank you to those of you who have already written in with some great questions, um, I just wanted to give you an easy way to request a personalized demo of GEM so you can see more of the features we highlighted today and find out how GEM might work for you and your team. So this poll is gonna be really simple. There's just two options. One is yes and one is no. Um, and then once we get some responses to this poll, we'll go ahead and kick off to Q&A. All right, should we go ahead and uh, you want to close it now, Katarina? Kelly, are we okay to close the poll? Yeah, I think we can go ahead and close it and move on to Q&A. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you all so much. And thank both you, Katarina and Georgina. Um, that was a, a wealth of information, by the way. Number one, that I think so many good tips that you shared, and it was pretty clear in the in the comments, uh, the chat box, as well as the questions that came in, that lot, lots of great tips that folks were were frantically jotting down. Georgina, I just to open up Q and A. Sure. Just one one question that I had is where what's a place to start again you shared so many great recommendations and tips but i mean but no but i mean just you yeah, know yeah. again kind of summarize where should i start if i'm an organization I, that i really am trying to do a better job at sourcing e urgs 
Um, probably LinkedIn. Um, you can source, um, actually in the search box, you can put URG and see what that comes up with. Um, if you are looking for URGs in sales, I'd say look out for um, sisters in sales. Um, that group has hundreds of um, participants. Um, so I'd probably just try putting um, um, putting something into the search box of okay. LinkedIn. Right. If you're looking for URGs and sales, URG plus sales. There you go. That's real simple. I, that's what I wanted. That's where I wanted to start, Georgina. Thank you yeah. so much. <laughs> uh, that's great. So, and then I've also got my team member, Ron Mockamer on. Ron, let's get to the, we've got lots of questions to get to. So why don't you give me a hand and let's start off with some of those. Yeah, no, that sounds great. So remember, if you could submit them to the Q&A section of uh, Zoom, that would be wonderful, everyone. Um, and you did get lots of shout outs and kudos, a wonderful presentation today, everyone. Um, so one of the first questions that had come in was just asking, how long do you source URGs before posting the job? Um, I think it depends on the amount of URGs that we assume are out there, right? So um, we usually create a um, like a sourcing map, just kind of thinking about, you know, running a quick uh, search on LinkedIn and finding, you know, everyone with the title. Um, so specifically, I'm looking for um, a technical support engineer, and so I sourced. Um, I looked on LinkedIn and put in technical support engineers. Found, you know, there's what, 17,000 of them. Uh -huh. um, and then we assume like 10 to 13% of them are URGs, right? And so when I feel like I've exhausted, when when I feel like I found like 15%, right? Cause those numbers are, are kind of weird. Um, then then I would probably open it. That's great. And so it, again, I think and it, it depends. Sure. And it will depend on probably the, the, the specific requisition in mind and, and Right. And who and who you've historically targeted for that and who you want to and what you're also trying to, to be more inclusive on on the, on the recording and sourcing side, too. So. Right. Right. And so, you know, historically, we've seen lower numbers of URGs in tech. So probably for some more of those like technical roles, you'll be able to exhaust that talent pool pretty quickly. Got it. Thank you. Um, Ron, what do we what's next? Yeah, no, thank you very much. Um, so this question was asking, um, how do you convince candidates your company values diversity and inclusion uh, when they point out an executive team with little to no underrepresented groups? I would be really honest and talk about what y'all are doing about it, <laughs> right? Like um, here at GEM, we have an initiative to um, build the, um, the social networks of our leaders. Um, with URG talent, right? And so that's like an ongoing project that we've been doing um, for almost two years now. Excellent. Thank yeah. you. Uh, just keep rolling through these questions then. Um, thank you. Totally. Oh, um, I have one more thing. I have oh. one more thing with that question. Sorry, oh, real no, quick. Hold that, hold that. <laughs> there are tons of DNI leaders out on LinkedIn. Um, maybe reach out to them, have them come in and talk to you guys. Like if you don't have um, a, a project or a process already, um, and they can help you um, like figure that out. Yeah, really good point. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Uh, next question was asking, um, is it recommended to join a group for Black women in tech if you are not BIPOC? Yes. Simple enough. Yes. <laughs> so, yes, some groups are closed, um, so you won't be able to. <laughs> like they'll ask you questions before you join. Um, but a lot of these groups are open, um, and a lot of folks want folks from all kinds of groups. Um, so, you know, I think a lot of these groups are named, um, you know, because they're catering to a certain um, unrepresented group, they're going to be named that to attract them but everyone's welcome, right? Almost all the groups that I'm a part of, um, queers in tech, black women in tech, like they're open to everyone. Yeah, I, I, Georgina, I've got a, a little, a, a wrinkle question to that. Cause I've always, I, I, I remember years ago when um, Stack Overflow and GitHub were sites that were first launched for tech professionals and it's like their programming <laughs> sites. But I remember mm -hmm. the, the the discussion around with, with recruiters of you know you, yes it's recommended that you join these groups and this goes back even pre-internet days when we did have like email server groups and you know joining them but 
to be part of the conversation, but not to immediately pitch, pitch, pitch. What, what is your recommendation there? Yeah, I like joining groups and just introducing myself, sure. right? And maybe not even saying that I'm a recruiter, right? Saying, like, hey, I'm here to like be a part of the space. Um, and, you know, commenting on things and having conversations with people outside of having your role open um, is a really easy and friendlier way to start nurturing folks. Sure. Um, you know, if you do have a job, I definitely would post it. Um, sure because everyone's looking for a job, especially now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, maybe just start off by introducing yourself. I actually think that that's, um, that that's the best way. I think that's a good rule of thumb. I just brought that up only because, I mean, I think, and, and there's obviously gonna be people in, in, in any and all of these groups that are gonna be receptive to potential opportunities because right. so, you know, all it takes is that right one. I may not even be looking right. Mm -hmm. And you just knocked on my door. I'm exactly. like, what's that about? Okay, <laughs> so, all right. Thank you. Yeah. Ron. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Um, so next question, uh, which is asking, would you recommend starting your keyword searches on LinkedIn, Google, or some other search engine job site? I really like LinkedIn, um, but if LinkedIn isn't giving you what you want, then I switch to Google. Mm. Georgie and I have also heard sometimes that some recruiters have found a lot of success on Twitter and Facebook. Do you have any yeah. with that? Yeah, with those highly technical roles, mm -hmm. um, Twitter, um, you know, with like design roles, probably Figma. Um, Twitter, actually designers are on Twitter all the time too. So yeah, for more of like the technical roles, I'd say Facebook um, and Twitter, but for more of the business roles, um, I'd say LinkedIn. Got it. Thank you. Of course. Do we, we have more, right, Ron? They, they keep coming. <laughs> we, do. we do, thank you. Um, so the next question was asking, um, with so many people working from home right now, are candidates more or less responsive? Um, and the kind of follow-up is, is a phone call a better way to reach candidates right now? Or is LinkedIn email outreach preferred during the pandemic and during these times? I would say um, response rates are higher for just networking calls. So when I've reached out to folks and asked to literally just have a networking call, um, they have been super responsive. Um, actually, yeah, and so less so with roles that I actually have open. Um, I have a lot of good success with emails over phone calls. I think it's, it's I don't know, I must be older or something because it feels a little awkward to like just randomly call someone before sending an email. Like sometimes in the email, I'll tell them that I'm going to call them. Sure. Um, so yeah, for me, email. These, these, these kids <laughs> today with their texts and their Snapchats yeah. and, 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 and right? Sure. They're, it might be a generational thing. Please someone tell me differently. I will start calling everyone, okay? <laughs> but you know, but you know, it's funny though about that, right? Because the, the joke is, and whether you're in marketing or recruiting, and we all know the parallels there, right? And, and mm -hmm. is the fact that um, a lot of us aren't, we're just not answering our phone anyway <laughs> these days, <Yeah. laughs> especially if we don't know who it is, right? And a lot of times if a number comes up and it's, it's not anybody in our, in our, you know, uh, uh, contacts or whatever the case is, we're, we aren't going to answer. And it's the, you know, the text is something that we, we all pay attention to anyway. Not like I'm trying to sell texting, anybody, <laughs> but you know, there you go. The next time I present on this, I'll do, I'll do some, some texting and some calls. There you go. Do it. Results. do it. Absolutely. <laughs> throw that, throw that in there. Bron, what else do we have? Yes. Thank you both. Um, so the next question was asking, uh, how do you stay on top of the hashtags? Uh, they are always changing. Yeah. Always, always, <laughs> always. There's so many. And There's different so many iterations, there. right? Different iterations of the same thing. Exactly. Um, I have a Google Doc. Every time I find a new one, I just slip it in. Um, yeah. I try to constantly talk to other recruiters in the same space as well and kind of share stuff and ask them, you know, what hashtags they're seeing. Sure. Um, and then when I talk to um, candidates, I'll ask them, you know, what other hashtags are you a part of? You know, why did you respond um, to my message? 
um, do you know anyone else that's looking for a role as well? Um, and those have had yeah. some um, yeah. really good responses. Sure, sure. That's great. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so in addition to the URG groups um, and the techniques and all the great tips you listed today, um, do you have a cheat sheet or any um, additional resources um, or any other tips you would want to share with the group? I think the, um, I think we've done a blog post on this. Maybe it's something that we can loop in when we when we send out the the um, notifications tomorrow for all those who attended and registered. Maybe we can include that link. We'll, yeah, we'll, I think. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, if you guys find it, we'll be happy to share it. So. Awesome. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, it, I think it's in the Zoom link right now. Oh, is it? In the, in the in the chat, you mean? I believe so. It might not be. I'm sorry. Adorable. I'll send it after. <laughs> no, send it after. We'll make sure we'll, we'll include it for the for the, the the note that we send out. No worries. All good. I think we'll include that with. Are we winding down, Ron? Yeah, we're we're just getting through the questions. Um, I think we have a couple more questions. Okay. Um, we have some more time. Um, what are your top tips for helping hire managers? let go of their limiting success indicators, such as elite schools, for example. Georgina, while you're thinking, I, I can just share yeah. my perspective um, yeah. that I've heard talking to recruiters. I'm not a recruiter myself, um, but um, you know, this, this is definitely, I think this is where recruiters really come in and, and make a difference, affect the business. And it's, it's a really important strategic conversation to have. Um, depending on the hiring manager that you're working with, oftentimes I've found that the most successful strategy just is with data. So if, if you do have GEM, of course, um, I, you know, I know GEM, so I can speak about GEM, but we do have this um, tool called Prospects, and it has some basic filtering capabilities. Um, and, and you might, using Prospects, you might be able to filter on years of experience, um, women, and then just show the hiring manager, um, this, this is this is what the talent pool is going to look like. Another way to do it is cohorting where you, um, if, if you go ahead and, and source with the hiring manager's stringent requirements, you can show them then mm -hmm. without, with outreach stats or pipeline analytics, well, this is what your talent pool looks like. Um, if we want to change that, these are some of the requirements that I suggest that we change based on my experience. Great. Yep. Plus one to both of those. Um, you probably have someone at your organization that comes from a non-traditional background that's kicking butt and taking names. Um, and so I would remind the hiring manager of that person, right? So like, you know, maybe that person doesn't have, um, isn't coming from an elite school or maybe doesn't even have like a high school diploma, like point to how successful that person is. Um, and sometimes that gives um, a little bit of credibility into, um, you know, looking for folks that are not coming from those elite schools. And it's, and you know, you've also got even co corporate examples of, you know, like the big four accounting firms and, and other, you know, global enterprises that have been public over the past few years that they've de-emphasized where mm -hmm. the person goes to school and, and even less so even on the education itself, depending on, you know, on the role specifically and, and how much that's taken into their culture. I know that I've definitely been reading that over the past few years too, so. So Ron, why don't we, I think we got one or two more. Let's go ahead and, and take those and then we can wrap, sound good? Yeah, um, so I know one of them um, is just about the, the Sherman HRCI. So uh, just a reminder, we'll be sending all of the, um, the recording to everyone uh, tomorrow, as well as the, the Sherman HRCI information. Um, and then we'll also, um, like we said, we'll, we'll include that blog post link that, that we had referred to as well. So um, we will definitely do that. Great. So that, is that a wrap then? Um, it, it looks like we do have, um, sorry, one more question. Okay, um, let's do it. 
So the, the question was asking, um, it was regarding to AAPI. Um, would you consider AI, AAPI as part of the URG, um, the underrepresented group? I think that's a really great, great question. And it's definitely contextual. I think you could apply this question in many ways. Are veterans underrepresented groups? Are members of the LGBTQ community underrepresented groups? I've heard a lot from, from the types of customers that we work with that, for example, in sales leadership, AAPI can be considered underrepresented or in other leadership roles, AAPI can be considered underrepresented. So it is really important sometimes to filter down more than just looking at a whole company perspective. Mm. I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> That's great. Well, listen, um, uh, Katarina and, and Georgina, thank you and Jem uh, very much. Thanks everybody for attending today as well. And we appreciate your time. And it was, uh, again, a wealth of information uh, on sourcing underrepresented groups. So thank you both very much again and have a great rest of the week. Thank you.